Hello and welcome to this R013 support guide. The aim of this video is to kind of outline what is required in R013 to give an insight as to what we're looking for as the marker, to provide you with some of the information that is already stated within your R013 coursework, but maybe in a little bit of a more student friendly way. So take notes as we go through this, pause the video throughout if required, and remember, don't be overwhelmed. There is support out there, we're here to help you, you just have to ask. So, starting off then with a little bit of an overview. The R013 coursework is a unit and it is part of the Cambridge Nationals IT qualification. The qualification is made up of R013 which is the coursework and R012 which is the exam. Each unit is worth 50% and this coursework unit is marked holistically which means we mark it at the end of the course. It is not marked ongoing. So there is no point in asking your teacher, how am I getting on? Can you mark this piece of work? Can you tell me what grade this is? Because we simply cannot do that. We cannot mark it as we go along and we cannot provide feedback to you on work that you've completed. In the same breath, we can't provide you with guidance and support for individual tasks. We can't be telling you what to write or what to do. That is up to you. You will be given a scenario and you'll have 20 hours to complete that scenario's tasks. The scenario will be followed by a series of tasks, usually four to seven tasks, and it will show your IT ability. The whole purpose of this coursework is to show your IT ability. It is an IT coursework after all. This is a generic overview. It is not a guide to a specific piece of coursework and it is not linked to any specific scenario. So when you get your scenario, what should you do with it? Well, first of all, you need to read it. Reading the scenario through will give you a broad understanding of what is required by the client. The client, end user, customer, or business, as we may call them, is the person who is employing you as the IT specialist to provide them with a service. This coursework is written as though a customer, a client, or a business is asking you, the IT professional, to deliver them a fully working solution based on their requirements. It is a mock-up of a real life situation where a customer would send you a letter requesting you to give them information as to whether or not you could do the work for them. It is assessing your ability to take what the customer wants, work out what's realistic, break it down into a series of tasks and communicate with the client continually. You mustn't be overwhelmed. This scenario is written for this coursework. It is fictitious and it is written to give every single student the chance to achieve a grade level one pass up to a level two distinction star. Therefore, there may be aspects of what you're being asked to do that you don't understand, that you don't feel you can do and that you are panicking about. That's OK at this stage. It may become clearer as we go along or in reality, there may be sections of this coursework that you simply cannot do. You must read all of the tasks work out what is required and try your level best to do as much as physically possible to be able to demonstrate your IT ability. Task one. Tasks are broken down and, and I'm, this is the last time I'm going to refer to something being called task something, but task one is always initiation and planning, that beginning of the project life cycle. And it surrounds the initiation and planning section. This links to LO2 of the course specification and there'll be more about that on the next slide, but it is something that you must be aware of and you can find yourself. They will nearly always ask you to do the following. They will ask you to produce some initiation and planning documentation that that documentation is going to include a brief, some objectives, some success criteria. It's going to talk about how you thought about any risks that may need mitigating. It's going to ask you to try and explain to them any constraints that you may have in completing this project. It's going to ask you to outline the resources that you will need to complete the project that has been asked of you. It's going to ask you, how will you test this project iteratively? Meaning, how will you test this as you go along to make sure that you are meeting the needs of the client? 
And it's going to make sure that you, as the developer, understand the security, legal, ethical and moral issues that may come up during this project. And again, as the developer, that you have some sort of plan about how to reduce the issues that may arrive, arise or remove them completely. It will be expecting you to show that there is a range of planning documentations that all link to one concise initiation and planning section. They're also going to ask you to hazard a guess, to explain, to give some more information about how you're going to evaluate whether this project's been a success or not. What you can't do is simply say, at the end, I'm going to evaluate it. They want some more information. How are you planning to evaluate it? You now need to consider how you will do this. And you can use the exercise book to help you. And I'll come back to that later on about how that can be a support. As a rough guide, you got 23 marks out of 80 for this section. And I'm, I would suspect that you would spend around five to six hours out of the 20 allocated on completing the initiation and planning part of the course. So as promised, here is the LO2 outline from the specification which you can find online or on the departmental website. Some tasks listed in the specification are keyword analysis, SWOT analysis, SMART objectives, scoping of the project into tasks and actions, a creation of a schedule that includes tasks, activities, workflows, timescales, resources, milestones and contingencies. If I was you, I'd be using that as a checklist. I'd be looking at my initiation and planning section and I'd be thinking, where is my keyword analysis? Where is my SWOT analysis? Where are my SMART objectives? Is there evidence that I've scoped this project into tasks and actions? And what sort of scheduling tool have I used? If I've used a Gantt chart, does it show my tasks clearly? Does it outline dependencies, workflow, timescales, resources, milestones and contingency time? And I would use that as a checklist for myself in my analysis of this first section. Now this is a specification that is written for R012 and R013, meaning you need to know what each of those are for your R012 exam. What it also means is that all of those may not be applicable to your scenario. And so tread with caution. Don't do something because it's in the specification. Do something because you know that it would lead to a better planned, a better initiated project for doing so. There is guidance there on how you would mitigate risks. There is guidance there on the planning documentation that you may use and what appropriate planning documentation is. There is guidance on iterative testing and what sort of iterative testing you are going to be required. Remember on the previous slide, I said about how you're going to test the solution. In that bottom box there, it says very clearly about how to create a test plan and what should be included in your test plan. Just like the list on the left hand side, I would be using that as a, a go to in checking that I had demonstrated my IT ability in the initiation and planning section. The mark scheme for this section is broken down into several parts and I'm just going to read through them now. As the marker, I'm going to be looking to see whether you have got the effective use of tools and features resulting in a potential of technology being fully utilised and clearly aligned to the intended purpose. Now that's very waffly and it's not very much in student speak. So here you go, let's have a look at some questions that I may be asking myself as the marker. Has the candidate used Microsoft Word? Have they changed the font, used headings or footers? Have they aligned the font? Have they used tables where appropriate? Used bullet points and numbering when required? And is there a dynamic contents page? A contents page that allows me as the user, the marker, the end user, the client of the business to click on certain headings and it take me to that area of their initiation and planning document. Has this candidate used project management software such as Excel or Project Libra? Is this embedded as an object in Microsoft Word? Can I access that information by being in the initiation and planning document or do I need to open up another folder? And if I need to open up another folder and another file, why have they not embedded it? Why have they not used that skill? Why have they not fully utilized or effectively used the tools and features in that potential technology? Because the features are there, so why has this candidate not done that? And at that point, I think I'd be asking myself, should I be dropping them down in the mark scheme? Has this person created a visualization diagram for any presentation or digital elements, such as a logo, a website, a presentation, or a flyer, or a business card? If they have, is it clear to read? As a third party, am I able to pick up this, this student's visualization diagram and create 
what they want me to create? Or is it a little ambiguous? Do I not really know what they want? And am I likely to come out at the end with a different uh, end point than what they would have done themselves? Is that visualization diagra diagram or document embedded within the MS Word document? And is it linked to the contents page? These are questions that I'm asking myself. And just like I said before, each scenario would be different. If your candidate was needing to be required to have an access, a Microsoft Access or a Microsoft Excel document, I might be looking for data dictionaries and how the data dictionaries are planning out what data will be used. I might be looking for asset logs and how the asset log will be planning out what assets they're going to be required to do this project. So that is just a rough overview, but that's what the mark scheme says. And anything that you choose to do to meet this client's needs needs to show that you have effectively used the tools and the features within that software to meet the client's needs. In the next section of the mark scheme, it says the objectives and requirements are stated. A critical path is defined with logical dependencies shown between key milestones and subtasks. There is a justification for the success criteria chosen. As the marker, I'm going to be saying to myself, has this candidate done a keyword analysis? Has this candidate created some smart objectives? Has this candidate got a task list and taken that task list and transferred it to a project plan? If that candidate has done that, I'm going to ask myself, have they done a Gantt chart? And in the Gantt chart or the project plan that they've chosen, is there a clear link to the tasks, activities, workflow direction, time scales, milestones and contingencies for this project? And I will tick these off as I go. Have you, the candidate, stated what resources you will need? By that, I mean, have you listed the hardware and software requirements for this project? From the task list and the user requirements, have you then created a project success criteria? I want to see a visible difference between the task list, user requirements and success criteria. The user requirements are for the user, so they should be in user speak. They're more of an overview of what the user has asked. The task list will be a breakdown into individual tasks that you need to complete to meet the user's needs. A success criteria is far more for you as the developer. Does the success criteria break the task into even smaller tasks that you need to tick off to say that it has been done in order to move on to the next section, to deem this project a success? Remember, I should be able to use your success criteria at the end of your project to be able to say whether or not the project has been a success. If it is just the same as your user requirements, I'm not likely to be able to do that. The final section of this mark scheme is where the holistic marking comes in. The holistic marking will mean that I mark this project at the very end. And so at the very end, I'm going to be looking for a link between the constraints, risks and resources that you have defined. And I'm going to be looking to see that you have made some sort of contingency and mitigation from that if needed. You need to have stated in the first place at this point what resources you will need. You need to have outlined any known project constraints. You can't predict the future, so I'm not expecting you to. But what I am expected is that you've gone down the line of what constraints am I likely to come up against? Have you explained the contingencies of this project clearly? And that should all be done in this initial section. So as a rough overview, before we go on to the next section, you should be doing a keyword analysis. Next to all of these here, I've put a page. This page corresponds to the book that should be appearing on your screen now. That page has got some information about what it is I think I'm gonna be looking for on the average project. Use those pages to inform what you're doing, to guide you. Take those page numbers, look at what's required in those elements and make sure you've done them. That way, there's no question that you shouldn't get full marks. So have you got a task list? Is there user requirements? Are there smart objectives? Is there a success criteria? Is there a project plan? Have you broken your project plan down into different plans? Gantt chart, Pert chart, visualization diagrams, test plan, data dictionaries where appropriate. Have you done a feasibility report? Legislative implications, user constraints, a constraints list and mitigation of risks. If you get to the end of this rough overview and you think, yeah, I've done all of that, you can be confident that the likelihood is you're going to meet that top mark. Okay, so trundling on. 
Notice how I've removed a task number here. This is likely to be task two, but then it will fall into other parts of the project as well. After each task, they're gonna ask you to do an iterative review. Now, as a guide, you're gonna get 11 marks for doing iterative reviews throughout your project. So they're really important. That's the difference between a level two pass and a level two distinction. So 11 marks is a massive hit if you don't do these accurately. You should be taking about 30 minutes per iterative review. It shouldn't take you too long, okay? So, you must carry out a review of the initiation and planning phase of the project, commenting on the following. Positive and negative aspects of your work, issues you have encountered and actions you have taken to resolve them. Further iterative reviews after that one will say, you must carry out a review of the data manipulation and presentation stage. And then they're likely to add that section at the bottom of there. How effective the initiation and planning phase has been on the data manipulation phase. So notice the top three bullet points are going to relate to iterative review one and all four will relate to every iterative review for each section after that. Pages 158 to 160 in the exercise book relate to iterative reviews and what it is that you need to do. Iterative reviews also link to LO8 of the specification. And they're really, really clear in LO8 of the specification what an iterative review needs to have in it. So it's a phase review that reviews all aspects at each phase. It's checking whether or not you're on track and on schedule. If there are any issues that are arising, technical, security, legal, usability. Any questionnaire or surveys from the user or audience that have been completed in that section would be included in the iterative review. So if you have submitted something to the client and said, have a look at this, tell me what you think, and they're giving you some information back, you should be including that in the iterative review. You should also be including any resolutions to any issues that you may have come up against, okay? If you have done any ad adaptations from the original plan, so you've deviated from the original plan, you need to make them clear here as well. It may be that your original plan was quite ambitious and it isn't possible for you to do what you said you were going to do. That's fine, but you need to put it in your iterative review. In those different pinky coloured boxes there, you'll see some guidance. So, workers must be able to carry out detailed review of their project. And it tells you how. What types of questions could be asked for the iterative review? So, what do you think made this phase of the project lifecycle a success? What did you think made it a non-success? When thinking about what went well and what didn't go well, did you do what you thought you would do? Did you think back to the choices you've made? You can use all of these questions in your iterative review. I can't give you a writing frame. I can't give you guidance. I can't tell you what to do in your iterative review. But this part of the specification, which is in your guidance from OCR for this coursework, can be used. So use this to form a template for your iterative review. What does the mark scheme say? Well, it says that iterative reviews have been carried out for all phases of the project lifecycle, showing consideration of both positive and negative aspects of the current phases, and it informs direction and decisions for all phases that follow. Resolutions and adaptations have been explained and some are justified. That's top marks, so you don't even have to justify all of them. What's interesting here, or I think is interesting anyway, is this again is the holistic marking. I can't say that you have done iterative reviews all the way through until the end. And if you don't do one, but you've done two, I can't give you top marks. If you've mentioned just positive and not negative aspects, I can't give you top marks. If you've not been realistic and you've not told me what resolutions and adaptations you've had to make, even though I can see that you've had to make some of them, I can't give you top marks. So here are some questions that you might want to ask yourself when you finish your review. Have I made reference to positive and negative aspects of this phase? Have I used the questions from the specification or on the previous slide. Have my plans changed in any way? And if so, why did they? And what have they changed to? Are there any changes? And if there are, have I explained them and justified them? Justified is an interesting term. That basically means, have you explained them, the changes that you've made, and explained then further why those changes were made the way that they were over another way, okay? So that's what you need to be looking at for your iterative reviews. Moving on. 
data manipulation and presentation tasks. There could be anything from one, two or three data manipulation and presentation tasks and the combination of all of these data manipulation and presentation tasks equate to 46 marks. 8 to 10 hours out of 20 hours provided should be spent on you completing these elements of the tasks. It's really hard for me to go through this in a non-objective way, not linked to any specification, live specification scenario or historic specification scenario. So I'm going to try and do my best to keep it as brief and non-specific as I can. This links to L05 and L07 in the specification. These are huge sections of the specification, so I'm not going to go through them. However, it is very clear in the specification on the skills that you need to be taught in L05 and L07, and so you need to be aware of them to then make sure that you're applying them to these sections. You will be asked, potentially, to create a spreadsheet of some short sort. In that spreadsheet, we're going to be looking for your ability to use formula and dynamic charts. That's huge. Formula is a huge bracket. And so I'm not even going to begin to start breaking that down into different bits of formula uh, or macros or anything like that. But you are going to be required to show your ability to use a range of formula and dynamic charts. You might be required to create a system that houses records. That system is going to be done in a database more than likely. And they're going to look for your ability to bring in information from a spreadsheet or a CSV file, keep it in a record or a, or a table, as we call them, to run reports automatically on that data, to run queries on that data, to use a form system to automatically fill in that table to say the user having to type in individual fields of information. And you could be asked to create a menu system of some sort within a database that when the user clicks on the icon, it opens up the menu system and they don't realize they're in a database. They think they're in a bespoke system for them. Pages 88 to 116 in the book will tell you all about that element of this data manipulation and presentation tasks. The other side of that, this now is presentation, word processing, presentations and desktop publishers. These can be found on 151 to 156 in the exercise book. Now, the word processing side of things. This is your general word processing skills on Microsoft Word, more than likely. It's looking at your ability to make letters from scratch, not using a template. It's looking at your ability to use advanced features such as mail merge, highly likely to be an integrated document linked to a database that you've been asked to create. It's going to look at your ability to create other elements within a word processor. It's not looking at your ability to type. Okay. Presentations. Yes, this is making a PowerPoint, but don't be fooled. This is your ability to use advanced features such as timings, removal of click on slide, hyperlinks, links to other documents, embedded documents, embedded dynamic charts, slide master, and timings as well as transitions and animations. You may be asked to create something that you believe should be done in a desktop publisher. Err on the side of caution. Desktop publishers are a great tool and you can find out when you should use one in pages 141 to 156. But err on the side of caution, they're not standard package items and therefore the exam board cannot request that you use a desktop publisher because not every school in the country will have one. If you're more comfortable using a word processor and you're able to meet the client's needs, use that word processor. And I've put the bottom there, interactivity, integration, and the changing of raw data into something meaningful is the key to getting the marks in this section. You're gonna be given some random data about some random scenario, and it's about you taking that data and making it into something meaningful for the end user. 46 marks, so the mark scheme is going to be chunky. Let's go through it. You need to show that you've used effective use of tools and features that results in the potential of technology being utilized and clearly aligned to the intended purpose. Applications used are fully integrated. Break this down into three more easy to understand bullet points. 
are the tools in the skills grid utilized effectively? I'm going to come on to the skills grid in a minute. So I'm going to be looking through the skills grid. I'm going to be looking at the tools that are underneath different marking criteria bands. And I'm going to say, have they utilized these tools? Remember, this mark scheme is for all scenarios. So if you're going to be required to make one Word document, one presentation and one database, I'm only going to be looking at those skills, not all of the skills in the skills grid. And that's really important to remember. Has the user requirements been met? Has what the client wanted in that initial scenario been outlined? And then have you stuck to it? And then the key thing here and the link to so many marks. Are your solutions fully integrated and linked together? Can the user get to all of the elements within this project from one place or are they having to open multiple things? If you don't integrate your work, you can drop down from the very top 46 mark band all the way down to 15 marks. Integrating your documents is so vitally important, so don't forget to do it. Now the next part of the mark scheme is exactly the same. And this is because the mark scheme is broken down into two sections. They're looking to see that you have done that mark scheme point for data manipulation, which is your spreadsheets and your databases, and do the exact same for the presentation of information as well. So what I'm going to say here is that I'm going to be looking when I mark to see that there is a visible link between what was intended and what the outcome was. Do the plans match? Are the links between the documents dynamic and do they work? And are the tools in the software that you have chosen to use utilised effectively and properly? When it comes to the presentation of information, I'm looking for that cross collection of data and it to be presented in such a way that I think that this is cohesive and all aligned to the same intended purpose. I want to see that you've thought about the way in which you've laid out your work because this section relates purely to your presentation of information. The next part of the mark scheme says that the solution allows for data to be imported and manipulated effectively and efficiently so that all requirements of the project can be met. So I'm going to be asking myself there, does your solution allow for me to import data? Have you had to import data? Does the solution that you've created allow me to interrogate and manipulate the data? So if you've built a database, can I interrogate the data by asking questions? Can I run queries? Can I run reports? Is there a way in which I can change the data and, and then see an output? So if you create a spreadsheet and you've got raw data and then you've given me a visual output such as a dynamic chart, when I change the data in the spreadsheet, does the chart change? I suppose what I'm saying here is that I don't want you to just stick a chart in and me go, that works. I'm going to check it works. I'm going to look that it works. I'm going to make sure that what you've created is accurate and robust. I'm going to check that what you've done is what you say you've done and that you haven't tried to do it and not succeeded. And to meet that top mark band, it all needs to work. The security and the legal risks have been identified in the planning phase. So see, that holistic marking, I can't mark this here until I've read the planning stage. And it's been carried forward into the solution that you as the user has taken on board what it means to ensure that no unauthorized access can take place. So I'm going to ask myself these questions. Have you implemented your plan for security, such as passwords? That's why it's really important in your plan for security in the planning stage, you don't start being really ambitious and say that you're going to have iris scanners in your work. It's not going to happen. Stick with passwords, stick with a little bit of encryption, and that means that you're going to be able to succeed in your project. When it comes to the legal elements, have you considered those? Or have you got some random images off Google and not thought about who the proprietor is? Is the data password protected and therefore is it protected from malicious intent? Once manipulated, is the presentation of the data considered and in line with the rest of the project? So is the data that you're presenting in your dynamic charts in line with the rest of the project? Have you used a consistent house style and theming? When you've created your initiation and planning document, it's got a lot of sensitive data in there. Have you password protected that Word document? Have you password protected your presentations to make sure that they're protected from unauthorized access, to show that you can do that skill, to show your IT ability? It says then at the end of this 46 marks that I'm going to be looking at, is, is the data suitable The next section of this says 
The data is suitably used to support the information being presented, which addresses to all the project requirements. Well, I won't know all the project requirements because I get the same as you. And you won't know them because you're making an educated guess based on what you know about your IT ability and what the user wants. So I'm going to ask these questions. Have you, the student, used the data that you have manipulated to complete the project requirements? E.g., if they've asked for a report for all the sales between date A and B, have you created a function that does this? That's the sort of thing I'm going to be looking for. That's why that task list that you created at the very beginning is going to be so important. Because it's going to allow you to check that you have done it before I mark it. Have you, the student, utilised suitable opportunities to integrate process data with communication methods and each distribution channel to communicate the information to each intended audience? The quality, quantity and accessibility of information provided clearly meets the requirements of the audience. So here's what I'm looking for. Have you used integrated documents to allow the user, the end user, whoever that might be for the scenario, to use the data in a suitable way, e.g. are there mail merge letters or dynamic charts in a presentation? Have you taken the audience into consideration? Has the scenario said this is going to be for people at a car rally? And therefore, have you taken into consideration that most people aren't going to want lots of text on a slide and they're going to be more interested in a picture? Is there a consistency amongst your product? And that word's there again, consistency. Is there a consistent theme amongst all your products where I can say this person's really taken it on board? Like I've said so many times before, you don't go into Tesco and see somebody in a lime green jumper working there because that's the theming for Asda and that wouldn't be right. So think about that consistent theme for your scenario. If you've been provided by the exam board a logo or a leaflet or some sort of colour theme, stick to it. It doesn't matter whether you like it or not, you stick to it. Now earlier I said about the skills grid and you may want to pause this video at this point. This can be found online, it's on the departmental website and we can provide you with a copy of it. But in this skills grid, it shows all of the grades available. Past Merit Distinction Level 1, Past Merit Distinction Level 2. I will take this skills grid and I will look to see what skills you've demonstrated. In this section where it says, has shown a range of skills, if you're pushing for a distinction, I'm going to look for those distinction skills and the merit and the past and below. It's not a ladder. Sorry, it is a ladder. You have to start at the bottom and work your way up. You can't just jump into your spreadsheet and do some what if modeling and macros. I need to see that you can show me all of the ability from the below section as well, okay? So think of it like a ladder and ignore what I just said and climb up the runs to the top of the ladder for those skills. Remember, this is a generic skills grid and it does not apply to all projects. So you need to decide what you're going to use in terms of software. And then if I was you, I'd go through and I would highlight the skills that you're going to need to demonstrate just so that I can clearly say you've done them. This continues on to a second page and this section is all about the presentation. So this slide is all about the data manipulation, spreadsheets and databases. And this side is all about how you present that information, such as presentations, PowerPoints, uh, Word documents, emails, and even websites. Okay, we've made it to the last section together. Well done. Let's look at the final evaluation and how you're gonna conquer this little task. The final evaluation is where I would say, in my opinion, most students lose marks and fall down. They end up entering a one-sided Word document, kind of saying, I did well on this and I did everything I needed to do, and then submitting it. This is worth 11 marks. And I think this evaluation should take you two to three hours. And I hope that that gives you some sort of scope as to how important this is to the whole project. The exam board gives you a really nice writing frame, which you can see on the screen now. It gives you an idea that you need to have an introduction and background to your evaluation. You need to talk about three different points of the methodology that you chose, and then you need to come to a conclusion at the very end. I'm looking to see here that you've really been ruthless and you've gone through your entire project from start to finish, from that very first point when you read the scenario for the very first time to this point now, how has it gone? What have you done? Can you give me some sort of comparative information of this was my plan and this was what I really did and this is what I think about the outcome. It wasn't as accurate as I wanted it to be. I couldn't do this because of this. I want to, It can be a discussion. I want to see that. You may want to do this as a, as a video, which is fine as well. You can do a, a narrated video. 
from the evaluation, the end user should be able to go and have a really good overview of how this project's gone. It also should be useful for you in future project, projects to be able to plan and avoid the issues that you found this time round. So really do consider the strengths and the weaknesses of the solution that you've provided. Make some recommendations of improvements. If you had more skills, if you had more time, if you had more money, if you had an endless remit of information. So let's have a look at the mark scheme then, because like I've said previously, this is iterative mark scheme that we go back to and back to and back to. And so speaking of iterative, this is where the iterative reviews will f get marked again, okay? You need to have done your iterative reviews for each section of this project so far. And all of your iterative reviews need to feed into your final evaluation. You need to draw from them the information. They should make this job a lot easier. So come back to your iterative reviews and put them into this evaluation section as well and comment on them. Comment on their effectiveness and what they explain and what they show to you. And finally, you then need to get some marks for this final evaluation itself. So you need to have done a detailed analysis of the plans versus the real project. I need to be able to see the plan on one side and the real project on the other. A screenshot is the best way to do that. And I'm able to go, ah, they've done that because they did that in the plan and that now makes sense. I shouldn't be jumping between the planning stage and this to try and draw these sort of comparisons. In your evaluation, you should be doing that for me. So you should be able to say, here is the plan that you can find in the planning and docu in, uh, initiation documentation. And here is a screenshot of the product. You can see that the, the links are here. This isn't the same because of this. I had to change that because of that. That's what the evaluation is all about. When you get to the evaluation, you're going to feel like the project's nearly done. Don't give up. What I would recommend is that throughout this project, now that you're going to do, you come back to this video, you pause it at different points, you watch the area of the video that's relevant to you and to that section of the, present, the project that you're doing, and you take your time. We're here to help you, and this video should help you, and OCR will help you with your scenario because they'll put in there exactly what they want. Good luck, take your time, work out what's required, and watch this video again if you need to. Thank you for listening.